just incredible yep. with his man, Jason. And, uh, there's Ronnie, Ronnie Lang, our old security guard from Starcast. So Justin here would say, uh-huh. that's not just the coolest. That's not just the best. That's just incredible. Incredible. I like the shirt piss and moan. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we need that for, uh, for Lois. I was thinking the same thing. Hey, Lois, we got the shirt for you. It says piss and moan. <laughs> Piss and moan. Oh boy. Uh-oh, Not this, guy, she- this guy tucks his t-shirts in. So we got to let Eric Bischoff now. Yeah. Who would ever do shit like that? Well, you do. You, you tucked your shirt in in Charlotte. <sighs> well, I mean, I'd like to show off my midsection now, you know, I used to not, but I do now. And here comes Mikey Whipwreck. Yeah. Mikey could do some stuff, man. When he first appeared in WCW, I was thinking, man, this kid can go. And of course now uh, let's, let's, let's call it like it, like it is. I was completely unfamiliar back at this time. I was, and even towards like 1998, 99, 2000, our last couple of years, when we had the influx of all these ECW guys, right? I didn't know, I didn't know any of them. Didn't know any of them because I completely ignored it. And, uh, which probably was, uh, you know, thinking in hindsight, I probably should have watched all the other stuff. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I really should have, it would probably, uh, it would probably made my, it would probably made my work a lot better. I think, I mean, of course, uh, when Mikey Whipwreck would show up in WCW, you know, I was not, they would not want me to say, well, there, he was quite a performer in ECW. But, but still it would have, it would have helped out my career. So I get it. Meltzer fierce, fierce killer. Did you see that sign? <laughs> I we, yeah, we should, we should book those fuckers. The piss and moan club. I got to meet just incredible. I think I've told that story, uh, in Allentown, Pennsylvania at, uh, at Bud Carson's when Bud had his shop. And it was me and Mikey Whipwreck and, um, who else was it? Two other guys. I'll think I'm in a minute. I'm old. Uh, oh, it was George, the animal steel. What the fuck? And, uh, one of the Samoans. So anyway, so I got to meet just incredible and, you know, everybody who's everybody who's in the business, even today. Loves the business. You realize how many guys in the wrestling business, when I'm, when I go to MLW and the, one of the first things they say is, Hey, love the podcast. Love what you and Conrad are doing. We're talking, I'm talking about not, not fans. I'm talking about performers. They just, you know, they just, they listen to our shit, man. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I do see what you're saying. Yeah. Without question. So Mikey Three, Whipwreck, two. just Whoa. incredible. Hurricane Rana on the floor, pulling out all the stops here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, without question. <laughs> We're going to get, I'm tired of saying, oh, there's, look at that in the background. There's a table already set up. Why not throw spike here? I like that target sign. I never went to, is this Monica, Pennsylvania, the Golden Dome? That's right. Yeah, I never we never had an oh event there. Why do you think that is? Shit, we could have had it there. I mean, we 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 went to other smaller venues. With this could have been a great venue for WCW Saturday Night, because you know back in uh, back by this time, you know everybody everybody in uh, World Championship Wrestling would say, "Oh God, we've got to do a WCW Saturday Night taping. Let's send out Tony Schiavone, Jimmy Hart, and Arn Anderson to run the fucking show." Cause nobody else wanted to fucking do it. That's awesome. This would have been great to have it a great venue for it. Wow. How come we're not seeing any blood yet? I want to see some blood. You can't do that in the opening match. What do you do okay. from there? Well, I know. 
but I want to see some blood. That's when, back when I was, uh, when I was watching wrestling, when I was a wrestling fan, you would, you would never see blood in the, in the spot shows. They would come to the Harrisonburg high school gym, or they would come to the Augusta expo and they would have matches. And then sometimes they would have like Ric Flair on top, right? Or Ricky steamboat or Wahoo McDaniel on top, but you wouldn't see blood. But then you would go to the Greensboro Coliseum where it would sell out or the Roanoke civic center. And there'd be blood. And we would go, we saw blood and we'd stand up and we'd cheer and that was my life. And I was in high school and college back then. How many ECW shows did you attend? You went to a number of them, didn't you? Yeah. I went to all of them in Alabama. Uh, so I would say probably five in Alabama and, wow. uh, two in Atlanta, one in Dalton and yeah, one in, uh, Philadelphia. Wow. Dalton, Georgia. Yeah. They ran a house show there. Did you ever come to any of our TV tapings in Dalton, Georgia? No, nope. we had, he didn't like us at all. Huh? No, no. I, I, I saw you all the time in like Huntsville and Atlanta and Nashville. I mean, I, I just didn't come to Dalton. You guys did like WCW Saturday night and I didn't need to see any more Hector Guerrero matches. I was good. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> you saying we had too many Hector Guerrero matches? Well, I mean, fucking laser trying was over, man. I get it. <laughs> have, have we done a show with laser Tron on it yet? No. <laughs> oh God. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's back in the day. I, I also like how the referees have their, their own look, right? red and uh, black striped shirt. You know, there were, they had powder blue in the WWF at that time. We had the striped shirts. I guess we had the powder blue. We kind of changed things around. I don't know. That's a uh, referee, Jim Molyneux counting three there. He's a listener to the podcast and Mikey Whipwreck is a listener here and he's just started his own podcast with Jerry Lynn, who was out in the first match. You should check him out. And I'm not sure if Justin Credible's documentary is out. Uh, I know that he was working on a documentary earlier this year and late last year about his trials and tribulations with drug abuse. And, uh, I know he ran afoul with the law and his wife got sick and there was just a lot of bad stuff happening in his life earlier this year. And I'm not sure if the documentary got released or not. I've, I've, there's been a, a number of wrestling documentaries that, that have been out there that I, I was very surprised about. There's a documentary out there. I don't know if you've seen it or not about Magnum TA. That's have great. You seen? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. He actually visits the site where he had his wreck. Uh, and Magnum was an NWA 70. Uh, and, uh, God, I just love that guy. What, Holy shit. What's your favorite? Uh, I mean, this is a weird thing, but. You think Magnum TA would have fit in ECW? I mean, he was a brawler. He was blood and guts when he needed to be. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Anybody could have fit in WCW if they were. Yeah, absolutely. I said ECW. You said WCW. Oh, you know, East, sorry, ECW. Yeah. I was going to say anybody could fit in WCW. You guys found a spot for Virgil. <laughs> well, touche motherfucker. <laughs> Can you imagine they're sitting around? God damn it. We got to beat raw this week. What can yeah. we do? We've got to have a special attraction for nitro. <laughs> we, we got all the luchadors. We got <laughs> Hoovy and Ray opening up what well, we need something else. We need something for that crossover hour. What can yeah. we put out? Who, who can we get? What can we do? <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Why don't y'all get that guy that used to stand behind Ted DiBiase and count money, but Ted uh -huh. DiBiase's not counting money here. It don't matter. He can just stand in the background again. That'll get him hanging from the rafters. <laughs> Her. Mike, uh, what are you doing this Monday? Do you think you could get down to Poughkeepsie? We may have a spot for you. No, you don't need your folding table. Now, Mike, I can sweeten the deal a little bit. If I tell you that we're right across the street from an olive garden. No, I don't have it in the budget to give you Hulk Hogan fuck money. I'm sorry, but here's what I can do for you. Uh, I, 
I can pay you a can of Hormel chili and an unsigned birthday card. You're in. All right. This is a man who understands the value of an unsigned birthday card. You see, the genius is you can give it to anybody over and over and over. It really is the gift that keeps on giving. Whoa. And a job brought him in and paid him a hundred grand a year to just stand in the background. And here's a guy who didn't stand in the background, Mikey Whipwreck. And I know you weren't keeping up with it, but this is just incredible's first loss in ECW. He's been beating everybody and nobody has uh, rolled him up yet. And Mikey Whipwreck with his, uh, his version of the stone cold stunner, which I believe is called the whippersnapper. gets the pin. Uh, you know what? This they're two for two. They are absolutely. Wh- how many stars did this match get? They are absolutely two for two here. I'm if gonna, they la- if the last one got two and three quarter stars, this had to get two stars. Star and three quarters. God, he must have been. Meltzer must have been pissed off of the world. By the way, guess what? You guys paid Mikey Whipwreck in WCW. Uh, Mikey Whipwreck and WCW probably made a hundred and four thousand seventy-five grand. Now here's a.